When Google killed off its Project Aura modular phone project late last year, many a phone enthusiast was bummed about what could have been had the concept taken off with the backing of Google itself. Joining us to discuss what could have been is Harrison Weber from VentureBeat. How's it going, Harrison? It's going well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's great to get you on today. So you wrote about how Google wanted design studios like Midnight Commercial to think big when it came to modules, designing modules for Project Ara, uh, beyond the typical crop of, you know, the usual things like speakers, camera attachments, that sort of stuff. What are, what? Were, first of all, let's start with a few of the other pitches before we get to the big kahuna. What are some of the kind of like obscure pitches that Google is probably receiving here? So Google knew that this phone could do simple things. It's uh, pretty obvious that if you could change any part in your phone, you might change the battery, you might change the camera. Uh, but Google knew that it's, you know, simple kind of easy ideas weren't enough to really blow people away. And so they contacted a bunch of different agencies. One was Midnight Commercial and said, give us the weirdest, most bizarre ideas you can think of. And uh, there are a bunch of them. One of them was, what if you built... What if you launched a satellite into space and build a module that is it's the only way to connect to the satellite and you pay $10,000 for the module and you're part of this elite club of people who can connect to Google's modular phone satellite, which is just doesn't make any sense. But it's amazing because a phone would never do something like that. And so that was the whole point that it wasn't, oh, is this idea going to make a lot of money? Google knew how to build products, or, or, or at least they thought they had a good idea of how to build modules for their phone that people might actually need. And in, in this case, they wanted something very, very out there and weird to show what is the longest of the long tail uh, that could be designed. And I'm, I'm bummed that we didn't get to see some of this stuff because maybe it would have sparked some interest, a little bit more interest around the modular phone kind of thing. And I guess it's still kind of going on with some uh, some OEMs right now, but it really seemed to be when Google was behind it, it seemed to have a little bit more weight than once Google got out of it entirely. But the, the bulk of your article is about one very particular project, and it's really fascinating to me. Tell us a little bit about the idea behind uh, what you called the Tamagotchi Aquarium, like real life Tamagotchi. Well, so Midnight Commercial was thinking, all right, how do we do something weird, something original? And one of the ideas they had early, early on was, well, what if it's a digital pet? Uh, and it would be sort of like a Tamagotchi. It would be sort of like, you know, a Neopet or something like that. You'd see it on the back and maybe it'd be animated. Maybe there'd be a screen and you'd like feed it. And it would be interesting because you'd sort of connect to your device on an emotional level. But they quickly realized any phone can do this, any browser tab could do this. So how do you, what's the weirder version of that? What's something Google could actually pay them to make? And they decided, well, what if we did it for real? And for real meant, what if we built uh, a module that had a living thing in it, or many, many living things? And around this time, Neil deGrasse Tyson had been talking uh, in, the, in his show Cosmos about this kind of almost alien creature called a tardigrade or nicknamed a water bear. Another nickname I love is a moss piglet. Uh, but they're these <laughs> tiny little wiggly things that have paws and they sort of wiggle around and they eat algae and they're very, very, very small. Very attractive, um, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, depending on the rendering or how close you look, their mouths are actually kind of scary, almost kind of razory, uh, razor kind of mouth. But they're these just bizarre little creatures that actually kind of look like something you might want to keep as a pet if you can look past the fact that it's like a microorganism. And so this module would be like a microscope squished down into you know a tiny little bump on the back of your phone and there'd be water and there'd be algae and you'd see it swimming around through a little camera. And so that camera would point at the creatures and through your phone, you could see them in real time by opening up a companion app. And if you shook your phone, you could see them move around and maybe, maybe if you shake it too hard, they'd be thrown from one side of the little biome that, that they were going to build to the other. And uh, that actually turned out to be an interesting problem for them, if you, if you want to get to that part. <laughs> so well, I, I have another, I have a question. We can get to that problem. But what about, I mean, they're difficult to kill, 
But I, I uh, believe me, I can kill almost anything. Um, plants, goldfish, what have you. I'll just leave it there and not go further there. But whose responsibility was it to, to keep them alive? Uh, at first they thought, okay, well, tardigrades are impossible to kill. That's what we saw on TV. That's what we saw in you know, scientific journals and all the blogs that have written about them. Uh, and, then, and then they found out that actually that's kind of a myth. And it, these things can survive in space. They've, it's been proven. Uh, they can survive in frozen ice, in steaming hot, like, uh, you know, it, 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 pools of water. Um, but they need special conditions to be alive, to stay alive. And, and each strain of tardigrade is a little different. And so the kind that you could buy, anyone, anyone can go buy tardigrades right now. You just look it up on the Internet. You can buy them. They'll get shipped to your house. But the kind that you can buy that are bred in labs are actually sensitive to heat. And so their whole idea of like this working out perfectly just by plopping a bunch of water bears into a little thing of water and sealing it up didn't actually work. Turned out that the heat from the camera alone could fry the thing. Uh, and so they had to start thinking, all right, well, what do we do? Do we pick another organism or do we design an app experience that helps you keep them alive. So it would be absolutely like no promises. You know, I suppose they'd have to guarantee that it would arrive alive, uh, <laughs> but no promises. It's your responsibility to, to keep this thing alive. And so they, I mean, obviously they got pretty excited about this project. And the more I read through it, the more I was like, wow, that is super cool. So many challenges along the way, not the most of which is, is kind of the crux of the whole problem, which is, you get it because, you know, just like in Tamagotchi, your whole purpose is to keep it alive. But in this case, I mean, if you don't keep it alive, like what's the point of the, the module that you spent X amount of dollars uh, for? Was that the, kind of the biggest challenge that they encountered? Were they able to kind of work their way through it uh, close to the end to, to the point to where Google just kind of killed the project altogether? It, they got close enough that they could build the thing, they could hook it up to a phone, and you could, through the app, look at it. Uh, they, so the, these are with prototype modules wired to the back of the prototype device that unfortunately the, the agency no longer has, I would have loved to get my hands on them. Mm -hmm. Google has them sitting in a shelf somewhere, probably gathering dust, but they, they made it, they made it and they, they, they swear it would have worked. The problem is, you know, beyond the creation, beyond slapping them in there and making it work. Um, they found out like you know really interesting tricks to kind of minify the magnif magnification technology, but it, it would have been like the biggest disclaimer ever um, <laughs> because they just did not figure out how to guarantee it. And, right. and it was to the extent that if it was if you left left your phone in, in your car, maybe your car got hot in the middle of the summer, they're gone. <laughs> and, and so they would have had to pitch it as like this art project that. Um, came with big risk and was much more about, you know, I, I don't know, just like what it represented rather than an actual thing you'd use. And I think that's also what Google wanted. You know, I, one of the things that I broke in this story was I dug up that they wanted to create a store for modules in LA and this would have been there this spring. Uh, but, and, and it would have been a showcase thing. Maybe they'd have someone who knew how to use the app and they'd be displaying it and showing it off, uh, to potential customers. So it's kind of like capturing the vision of weird that they wanted to use to inspire more practical stuff. I think it's a perfect, perfect representation of what Google was mm. today. They're, you know, they've sort of evolved their views on hardware with the pixel Google right now is a much more practical hardware company. But when this was in the works, it represents exactly like how weird and out there they were thinking. For sure. Yeah, that was what I was going to ask you because, I mean, you say that uh, this was a time when Google would say, I mean, Google said to uh, Midnight Commercial, just do, do the thing. D just do it. Don't worry about money. Go for it. Um, and that just doesn't, I mean, are they saying that to anyone anywhere now? <laughs> I, probably not. Uh, I wonder about ATAP. I, I don't have any in, inside information on what the rest of ATAP is doing. The, the, the studio at Google that was working on Project Aura. But 
It's just not what it was. And the whole point of ATAP is let's get a bunch of contractors and see if we can be really good at managing them. And by having so many different kind of people working on this and that and focusing on each little piece, if it's orchestrated properly, you'll end up with really amazing products. And they sort of proved that's true. And they also proved it, it's not true because delays ultimately killed Project Aura. Um, what's, what's sad is that we never really got the final answer how this was going to be mass produced. Right around the time they were thinking about that, the, the people who are building this tardigrade, tardigrade aquarium for the modular phone, uh, the project was paused, which means killed. Um, so we never really got a final answer. What, what would it have looked like? And, you know, was it really going to ship? And, and I sort of hit in the story that maybe you know, probably it was going to ship, but may, you know, who knows how many, who knows how many they were actually going to be able to pull off and, and off an assembly line and have it survive. Do you think there are projects like this uh, midnight commercial tardigrade project everywhere that Google has, you know, supported and uh, just crazy things like this? I'm thinking of the Silicon Valley, the HBO show, the, the monkey, <laughs> if you watch that. But do you think there are projects like this that are just, just were dropped um, midstream or at the end, right before shipping? Absolutely. Well, so there were, there were at least 28 modules in development. And wow. then, you know, Google received a thousand submissions, uh, a source told me, around a thousand submissions from outside developers and a hundred of the ideas were apparently kind of credible ideas for people who could actually build them. So there are probably many interesting modules alone. Um, there are a lot of things that they don't announce. You know, there, were, there was an acoustics project, I think I wrote about in my last RR piece uh, that Google never announced that, you know, they had been spending a lot of time trying to you know, come up with kind of weird new applications for audio. Um, there's a lot of stuff that Google doesn't talk about, but the thing that's really changed, and this is the crux of why Project R is gone uh, and why Google's hardware plans have changed so much, is they, they reorganize hardware. The, Google used to just plop hardware teams wherever they sprung up. And now, as of last year, as of the middle of last year, it's all organized under one team, and that allows them to ship products, which they've done. Uh, it, you know, Project Gar never shipped. It was going to be delayed probably more and more into 2017. Um, I don't have proof that they would have launched it this year even because they have such a bad history of delays. Uh, but but the, the bottom line is that there was probably a lot of really cool, interesting stuff going on in little pockets at Google and now uh, I, I bet it's a lot more practical. And I would also wager that Facebook with Building 8, uh, they hired the old leader, of the original leader of ATAP, Regina Dugan. I bet Facebook is the place to really dig up the weird side projects now. I bet there's some interesting stuff going on there. Yeah, I mean, you read my mind. That's exactly what I was thinking. When Regina left, that really, and that really kind of timed also with just this bigger kind of uh, shift happening at Google at large and, and Alphabet, of course, once it kind of morphed into Alphabet and everything became their own separate entities and had to start proving themselves. The entire company as a whole got a lot more practical and started, you know, started uh, being very uh, aggressive it, with the projects that it killed and kind of letting go a little bit of the imagination aspect of things and just going, all right, what can we ship? What can actually make us money? That's important. And when Regina left, I mean, it was right about that time when all that transition was happening. She was very much a, one, one of the, the lead minds uh, behind all the interesting stuff happening at ATAP. So. Um, it's, oh. I, would, I would just, sorry, I would just add, it's um, probably a good thing that they're doing this. I, I think the Pixel's done well. It's impressed lots of people. So financially, maybe this is the best bet. But it's not nearly as interesting or mm. crazy. Um, and I selfishly enjoy seeing Google be weird yeah. and, and they're just not quite as weird as they used to be. So true. Mm -hmm.